year end statement. And there's a lot of information on this report. And, yes. Pardon me. Yes, there is. Can you hear me? Um, because I'm masked. Is that better? Yes. You okay. can hear. Um, so there is a lot of information on the report. The first column, obviously, that's our prior fiscal year 2019. The second column is the board approved budget for fiscal year 2020. The third column is where we ended 12 months year end. The next column obviously is the difference from the board approved budget to where we ended up. And then we have the percentages for the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2020, and then the prior year, which was requested in a previous finance meeting. The other additional information is how it all breaks down in terms of revenue, the fees collected, the grants received, the assessments, and of course the rental income and our miscellaneous. And of course, uh, further down is a breakdown of our expenditures. So where we ended up with revenue, we anticipated 2.4 million and we ended up collecting slightly more. And that was a result of activities with our sources, primarily our minor sources. And you can see that AOP, I won't touch on every line unless there's a need to. A lot of this is very familiar information that has been shared before, but I will highlight and go back and entertain any questions. And the AOP, we collected all of our revenue. The 378,000 that was collected and budgeted, we anticipated also transferring 32,000 of that into our Title V reserve account. We actually used all of the 32,000 that we anticipated transferring to our reserve account because of the additional workload. And the good news is, the permits that we wanted to get out, we were able to uh, put out to public notice this past two months. So uh, it also included a significant Title V audit, which uh, was a success as well. The members of the audit committee were uh, definitely comfortable with our uh, state of Title V activity and how our team members, compliance and engineers work together. And I'm sure the engineering will provide you more updates on that. I can just give you one. Little okay, update. here we go. We got an email this week. They're still working on our draft on their draft report, so we don't have a report yet. Um, but they did say they're working on it, so we don't, and we don't even have a date of when we'll get it. But they were, as Lynn said, they were very impressed. They were working on our backlog for AOP. That was a real big deal. So I, I've got a feeling it's going to be a good audit, but I, I don't have a sense yet, and we won't know. Maybe we'll know for our September meeting, I, but they couldn't give us a date. And this is a separate audit from our state audit that is done every two years, which is projected to take place at the end of this calendar year. So likely virtually. And so uh, the NOC, the next line, NOC major minor, that's where we uh, received additional, or actually it's the third line, sorry, at the second and third line, we received additional uh, funds from uh, activity that occurred with our sources. So we had budgeted 110,000 and received 134,000. And again, that's additional activity with our sources in our six county region. The registration, we received additional funds because I'm gonna let Debbie um, talk to why you're receiving additional 16,000 with the annual registrations. So we budgeted 380 and we received 396. I'd have to say that most of that came from a few new sources, but we had probably nearly a hundred sources that received late fees for not paying on time. And Debbie works with the sources when there are uh, uh, when they are tardy with their uh, their reimbursement to the agency for the fees assessed. Can I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Were those pre-COVID, those late fees? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. <laughs> the fees for registration went out August 1st this year. And just FYI, on Monday this week, we had six, we had six, we got 63 checks in one day 
on this past Monday, which was amazing. And the, and the everything just went out on the 1st of August. So they have till what end of August to pay. And then, you know, we always give them some more breathing room and, and we, you know, we, at this year, we anticipate we may get some calls and we can work things out with folks. So what we haven't heard from anybody yet from, for that, from that perspective. We, typ we typically receive, you know, 65 to 70% of our registration uh, revenue in the first couple months of the fiscal year. As Fran said, Deb sends them out August 1. August, September is the busiest months, obviously, of receiving the revenue for the registration fees. And that's the majority of the, uh, the fees are collected in those two months. Any further question and clarification on what we just shared? It's a lot of information. <laughs> okay. And then for uh, moving on down the list, uh, we have collected you know, asbestos was slightly under this year. And of course, we believe it's part of it had to do with the COVID because of the, the new restraints on contractors and what their ability to go to businesses and homes to, uh, you know, make renovations, modifications, new building, construction, etc. So, but I can tell you for this, you know, starting over this fiscal year, to date, we've received, I think we're at 15,000 for asbestos. So as soon as the stay at home piece was, was relaxed, business picked up again. So um, I think considering what the situation has been and is, we did quite well on asbestos. We, you know, I thought, we'd, I thought we would make, I thought we'd get less revenue than we actually got. So I was amazed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting out there if y'all are, you know, kind of, uh, looking at you know permits and with the cities and counties and building and renovations there's still a a demand for all of the work and activity for contractors so it hasn't it seen it really hasn't slowed down yeah ours never stopped like yeah. we kept going all the way through the shutdown we just moved it to people's houses yeah 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 and that's one of the things that um can go on when you're shut down people tend to want to do something so that mm -hmm. you can con contract in Correct. stuff good point that's very true so uh for our land clearing we definitely exceeded the the 15,000 budgeted and received 31,900 and i mean though it's wow. disappointing to to see the activity of the outdoor burning, uh, it almost doubled in Revit. Well, it over doubled. Cynthia, you wanted to say something there? Well, you know what is interesting about this and comparing it with 2019 is that everything seems to have been going up pretty much for the most part. Correct. Yeah, it's interesting to see the statistics, you know, so um, this is all really good information and in, uh, comparing our two most recent completed fiscal years. Yeah. More importantly, it'll be interesting to see where we end up in 2021. Right. So that'll be real critical and we'll closely monitor that as well and keep in close communications with y'all. And for the next section is our grants and uh, you know, the wood smoke education, the wood smoke reduction, the PM 2.5, Chica Peak air toxics. We're on definitely on target with all of those grants. The core, FSEC. FSEC, as you can see, we did collect slightly under our um, anticipated 35,000. The good news is that we were able to assist the UTC and FSEC with issuing the AOP for that facility. As you all know, that's the gas turbine powered plant in Grace Harbor County, Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council. So that's really good news and kudos to Mark Gooden, our engineer who really um, took the lead on that and helped FSEC and worked closely with EPA and Ecology to get that out the door. Fines, we did collect 66,000, about 11,000 
more than we had budgeted. And, you know, you never know what to, to budget there. And investment income, kudos to Thurston County and the treasurer's office and investing our uh, residual funds and, and really maxing out the, the earnings there. So thank you very much, Ty, and your staff there at the treasurer's office. We definitely exceeded the $20,000 budget and brought in 34000 Oh, that's nice, because that, that'll tank this year. Oh, yeah. I work closely <laughs> with Nicole. It's really pleasant working with all your staff there in the treasurer's office, and I work with quite a few of them. So thank you, Ty. That's a good group. I'll, I'll let them know. <clears throat> and for building income, we, you know, we're on target there. We do still have that one vacancy. We have out of nine tenants, we have one vacancy, and and that became vacant at the end of last fiscal year. We are slowly marketing that that uh, vacancy. We've had a little bit of contact and bites on the, the Craigslist ad, but um, and then moving to a more important line, the general fund contingency line. We budgeted two hundred thousand, and we did not have to use any of that. Again, the Title V contingency we anticipated, as I said earlier, we were going to transfer 32,000, but because of workload and uh, successful workload audit, we were able to um, uh, use that fund. And that's what it's for. The contingency is there in the case we need to use it, and we did use it this year. So we ended up, uh, you know, collecting a little over 100% of what we anticipated and not using our general fund contingency. And we'll talk more about the contingency when we get on page two of the general fund balance sheet. I can move on to expenditures unless there's any revenue questions or... Is there anyone with questions? No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, well, moving to the expenditures. We anticipated, uh, you know, a little over two million in payroll expenditures, and we were under by about forty-five thousand. And the reason why we were slightly over on the salaries is because that is a reflection of the additional time that we had our interns work under the community air toxics, and that is a reimbursable grant. So it was great that we had we had savings in that grant. And then we were able to convert that into utilizing our interns for their expertises and assisting Odell with her um, delivery on that grant, which is still ongoing, which is expected to end on November 30th, 2020. For the non-payroll expenditures, we were slightly under at about $6,700. Uh, you know, the line that I probably will share our highlight is the professional services, though we budgeted 43,000, we ended up utilizing 50,000. And, you know, parts of that, that line consists of a couple things. Not only our legal fees, but also, we also um, utilize uh, services to deliver um, legal notices to individuals who are violating the uh, Clean Air Act. And Debbie contracts with a number of different sheriff's office, private sector businesses to deliver the legal notices uh, to communicate with these folks when they're not uh, responding to uh, us in a, 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 a probably an amenable way to uh, work with us on the violations that have occurred. And, and that, is actually getting more expensive. So, uh, you know, they have expenses too. Those expenses are going up. And I don't know, I can't give you a, a number of how many legal services we did conduct during the course of the fiscal year. Um, but I'm, I'm going to guess it's probably over 50. Is it that high? I would say 20, but it, it could be, I don't know. Yeah, it's easy for me to get that number, but and we, we use that as a last resort if, you know, we send out, we send it in the mail, we send it certified, we, you know, mm -hmm. we try to do a variety of things before we engage these folks, but sometimes it's the only way we can get the information out. Mm -hmm. And for our, for our legal services, we had 
and we're still waiting to get an, an answer. We had a very expensive appeal for the Pollution Control Hearing Board and we have not gotten, we, it, it was, the hearing was actually the middle of July, uh, middle of July, yeah. And we have not gotten a response. They have 90 days to give us a response on that. Um, so it'll, that, that response will be very interesting, but it was extremely expensive for mm -hmm. us. You'll see that in fiscal year 2021. Right. And uh, let's see. So pretty much there's, there's no other areas that um, really come out as uh, unusual on the non-payroll expenditures. On the building and capital, you know, we made our debt service. We're still paying our alarm company for our monitoring fees. Utilities came in slightly under budget. Our janitorial supplies. At the beginning of the year, we were hoping to continue with a, an employee of the agency conducting the janitorial. As you well know, we contracted with the janitorial company. And because that wasn't in the original budget, but we knew we had funds there to cover that type of expenditures, uh, that's why we're slightly over by, uh, well, 7,100 in that, because we were paying 800, and that's what we would have paid someone salaries and benefits for too. So the money was there in the annual budget, but it wasn't there in that particular category. Is that mm -hmm. clear? Yeah. And then what, yeah. So this year it's reflected, you'll in, see it in this category as we, as we, for the fiscal 2021 budget. So yeah. yeah. It's now, right. yes, it'll be reflected in the janitorial line. Right. So we're, and also we're slightly under in that uh, total building and capital. We're still under at about $8,400 ended up. In our operational line, we were slightly above by 25,000. And really the majority of that was the addition of wood smoke reduction bounty program. We paid out about 23,000 more than what we anticipated. But there was budget authority there to be able to compensate and cover those expenditures. And so, we're, And we're actually working on an amendment right now to our agreement with Ecology for an additional 35,000 because we're, I mean, we're, we're very successful in this program. And so Dan has been working with Dave Grant who runs the program at Ecology to amend the language. Um, and so again, we provide the wood stove change out for Thurston um, and then parts of Clallam and parts of Jefferson, or Mason, sorry, Clallam and Mason. That's this next year. That's fiscal 2021 amendment. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, when you consider the revenue brought in, the expenditures um, paid out, we ended up with a $62,000 um, uh, difference, which will be transferred back into the general fund. So that's our income statement of revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year 2020. Can I ask you a quick question, Lynn? Yes. So I'm just, and, and I don't have any concerns here, so don't take it as that. I just want to make sure I understand the policy because I don't think I've ever asked this question. Uh -huh. um, do we have a policy or is there a law about how much variance there can be between, and what I'll call line items, your bigger chunks like payroll, non-payroll operation from the budget to the actual, I just wonder because it feels like there's been a little bit more variance the last couple of years in some, especially some of the grant programs. And should the board be doing adjustments to the budget or are we okay with, I mean, it's only 2% in the whole scheme of things. So I don't, I don't feel like we should have, but I just want to understand where that rule lies. Well, yeah, and, and no, it's a good question. I'm glad you bring it up, Jim. So a pro, um, for fiscal year 2020, we were following previous policy and that is the board approves a budget of 2.4 million. We can't exceed that. So just the bottom line is the Correct. only part. Correct. However, okay. Randy had brought up in a previous finance committee meeting, he would like to see us identify a uh, subcategory sub maximum. So example, for um, for the operational budget of 197825 we would um, not exceed that category by 10%. So 
So before you come to the board, okay. Yes, sir, correct. I, okay, yeah. and did we make that a policy? We're, we've instituted that for starting in fiscal year 2021. Next, this, the current fiscal year we're in. But so, did we put it in our bylaws? No, or our person, or our finance policy? I don't, I don't think we put it in the bylaws. I think it was just a, something that you had asked for that we said we would do. Um, okay. Okay. Do we, do we need to put it in a more um, formal uh, type of policy? It's, it's more of an administrative type of action. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. It's in the minutes. So. It, it, as, yeah, that's, you know, it's in the minutes. And that's something that will be reflected on the next uh, financial report you see. We're going to footnote it at the bottom that each four of the four subcategories, which is payroll, non-payroll, building capital, and operational. There's four categories that we will not be able to exceed 10% of the category's budget that's been approved. But I'll, I'll, I'll check with Jeff just to make sure that, that having it in the minutes is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, yeah. we can do that. Yeah, it seems reasonable. I don't remember taking that action as a board at all. So, I mean, and, and I don't have the best memory either, so that's fine. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's, the, I, but I, I'm glad Randy brought it up. Way to go, Randy. Yeah, Randy, <laughs> yeah, Randy brought it up uh, a while ago. I think it was two finance committee meetings ago. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, because it's been that long, it's hard to remember a lot of the things. So it would be nice to have it a little bit something that is more substantial so uh, um somebody's memory doesn't everybody's memory doesn't disappear <laughs> i understand and it will be footnoted at the bottom of the next financial report you get for the new fiscal year as well okay, okay. did we say that if that variance happens we review it or the board amends the budget the board would, it would come back to the board for board action if it exceeds 10 percent to amend okay to amend. okay So is there any more questions about the expenditures? Lynn, did you have anything additional to add to the expenditures? No, not to the income statement. Okay. We can move on to the balance sheet if you'd like for the, the fund balance sheet. Okay. Page two. Okay, so we started the year with $1,658,408. We have revenue of 2.4 million and expenditures of slightly under 2.4 million, or, or 2.4 million, yeah, 2.435,000. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so the net difference there is 62,000, as I stated earlier, that will go, you know, that's going into our, back into our general fund. We overspent in the Title V by 56,000, so the, uh, that uh, 56,000 is being collected in the current fiscal year to be paid back, and that'll uh, reimburse the general fund for the temporary loan. The fund balance allocations for contingency funds that the board has approved there's 391,000 as a uh, emergency contingency. The Title V, again, uh, will owe the general fund 56,000. The tenant security deposits, we ended up with 5,575 that we're holding. Office building, we have 30,000, monitoring 20. The database, we have 110,000. And the vacation and sick leave did increase by about 60,000 from the prior year. And that's based on staff's vacation and comp, and then the director's vacation and sick leave for the year end June 30th. And, you know, I think part of the reason why it went up, obviously, is folks haven't been taking time off because of our recent um, virus and COVID. And um, they need to. Are done. They need to. Yes, sir. Correct. And Fran is 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 monitoring that. And folks are taking vacation. They may not be taking the length, and they may be taking bits and pieces, but they are taking time. 
I have a quick question. Was any staff um, infected with COVID? No. Oh, good. No, no staff, no families. Knock on Excellent. wood. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really? think that's wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like wood. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, so we have a uh, unreserved uh, one, a little over one million dollars. So. So basically, that's our fund balance sheet, our uh, contingency funds. If there's any questions on page two, or happy to entertain any questions. Is there any questions, ever, anyone? You're fading, Lynn. I don't know if you're fading for everyone, but um, does anyone else have any other questions? Feels good. So I have a quick, just a quick thing. If you were trying to highlight one, one or two things, what would it be, Lynn, to just make sure that we're aware of? You know, I think it's not so much what I just, re it's not so much what I just reported on. And we're, and Fran and I continue to closely monitor the budget you know, like she said, there's great staff here. Fran keeps staff up to date on a regular basis. We report to them, uh, I think closely monitoring the budget is very important. Clearly keeping in a close uh, connection with our main revenue sources and uh, definitely closely monitoring probably more so this year than any other year is making sure that our, uh, our fees are coming in and working with those if they do ask for accommodations. Right now, as Fran said, we have not received, I, to, and Debbie shaking her head no too, we have not received any requests for accommodations at this point. So right now it's, uh, we haven't made any changes yet that are necessary, but it's not that we haven't considered but we are, we've talked amongst ourselves and um, now we wait. It's a, it's a waiting game, but again, we want to be prepared in the event that folks do start contacting us. So, um, but I think it's, you know, closely monitoring, closely communicating in-house and, and watching our, um, uh, the news and, you know, the state feds, you know, so, okay. Helps. You know, we, we just don't, we don't really know, as you all don't know for your own budgets, how things are going to roll out this year. Um, you know, obviously we've got concerns and questions about the state and federal core. Well, you know, the, we've got contracts in existence, but they can obviously be amended. Um, and staff working hard. I mean, they are trying to get permits out um, and there are, you know, we're not getting a lot of new source review in. Um, so they're trying to catch up and, and what we are, we do have activity. So we've got air operating permits, we've got new source review, um, staff are out doing um, inspections. So, and they're also responding carefully, but they're responding to complaints, burn complaints. Um, now those have been slacked off a little bit at, because we've got the no burns in all of our six counties now for fire safety. But, um, so they're out there, they're working. So those okay. predictions are, are sure a gamble. We. <laughs> We predicted down 40% for our July sales tax from last year, and which is in July is May. So th that's when we get it for the month of May. And we were up 9%. Wow. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, all ho Lowe's and Home Depot, I think. <laughs> and Amazon. Pro Am home projects. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, exactly. <laughs> what else is there to do but shop yeah. online? <laughs> And, you know, and I'm amazed at, at the, you know, home sales are going fast. People are, you know, have to, are still bidding for houses. I mean, I walk in the morning before I, you know, before, before I come to work and I notice a ton of new houses start, housing starts. So, you know, we've got a lot of timber folks out there in terms of our sources. They're busy. Um, yeah. You know, Simpson Door, which is McCleary, sent us, they normally send us to have quarterly checks. We got the entire check. They sent wow. $1,000. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, just, my I realtor said that it's cr uh, the craziest market she's ever seen, like 30% cash. And so the banks aren't, aren't checking the values. 
and it's it's just phenomenal how fast houses are going yeah. as you said yeah. it's yeah. so it's I, totally I, unbelievable we're just being extremely careful mm -hmm. i i am I'm, a, I'm very conservative when it comes to budgeting you know staff and lynn know that well um so we're just monitoring things you know there's no travel um any major expenditure you know it has to come through me so we've had you know we we had some backup servers that are old and two of the three died so but luckily nick can rebuild this he's he ordered three new servers um and he's rebuilding the system and he can do it for half the price and buying it all you know all redone. but it's still you know twelve hundred dollars so we're, we're being very careful that's all i can tell you well, you just don't know anymore. Um, I know that's what our Troy, our finance director said. He says, that's an anomaly. That's an anomaly. But he keeps saying that every month. <laughs> well, I'm happy for the anomalies as long as they're in the plus side. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. an apocalypse. So. No. Yeah. Well, if there is no more questions, we may be done with our finance committee. Is there anything else anyone wants to ask or, or say? Randy? No? So with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Good job. And I'll go, you know, I'm in my house and I only have a light sweater on. I'm going to have to put something heavier on. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> How can that be? But it's cool right here. Um, I don't know. Okay. Here in Belfair, it's, it's nice, and, nice and toasty. Is it? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's... It's not so bad outside, but my um, sewing computer room gets really cold um, for some reason. Or maybe it's me just sitting. But anyway, so I will see you at 10, right? Okay, we'll see you at 10. Thank you. Okay. Meeting we'll is adjourned. Bye. Bye. We can leave the Zoom and come back to the same Zoom. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we can just leave it on. Okay. I'll, I'll put it on mute. Just leave it over. Huh? Yeah, you